In this lesson, we are going to look at turning effect. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to learn how a force can result in a turning effect, learn what the turning effect is called, and learn how the turning effect can be quantified. So first off, what is a turning effect? Whenever you have a force applied to a body, it can cause that body to move, and we already stated this in a previous lesson. But when that body is in contact with a pivot or a fulcrum, it can cause that body to turn about that pivot or fulcrum instead of moving from one place to the other. So if it is that we want to measure this turning effect, which is called the moment of a force about that pivot or fulcrum, what we need to do is be able to analyze the information to determine specific features of it. So some of these applications of simply using a turning effect is, for example, a door. Notice that you have a door, you hold it at the door handle, and you pull it open and it spins at the hinges. So in this case, the body itself is the door, and the pivot or fulcrum is the hinges that it swings about on. In the next case, look for example a spanner. We can see that we can insert the bolt into the hole that is prepared for it, and we can apply a force to it, causing it to turn. The bolt in this case, where it is fixed, is the pivot or the fulcrum. The last example is for instance a seesaw. So on a seesaw we have it on top of a pivot or fulcrum. This is the horizontal bar and what you're doing is you're applying a force and you're causing it to turn about that pivot. Now notice in each case the pivot which is here, which will be the bolt here, and the hinges here is what the object is turning about. And the object is just simply in contact with that pivot. All of these can simply be broken down into lever problems. And to understand how to analyze the information or quantify the information, you must be able to identify certain key features of the system. And these key features are the effort, the load, and the fulcrum or the pivot. Now let's say for instance we have this diagram here. The effort in this case can be on one side of the pivot and we'll call this side the effort. And in the other case, in the other side, we will have the load. Now the load is just simply what you're trying to lift when you're applying this effort. And we have the pivot or the fulcrum in the middle. Now that we have identified the effort, the load and the fulcrum, what we have to do now is simply try and find a way to quantify it. And to quantify it, we use the equation for moment of a force. The moment of a force represented by the symbol T. And the reason it's represented by the symbol T, it is because it's related to something called torque that you would see f in future lessons. You're not going to experience it at this level, but at a higher level you may see more about torque. Torque, as I said, is given in the units of Newton meter. Now the Newton meter is also a unit that is very similar to the Joule, but it is not the same thing and you should remember that. The Joule and the Newton meter are two different units. It's going to be equal to the force multiplied by the distance. And just to observe the derivation, notice Newton in force, meter in distance, multiply it like you would any algebra term, Newton meter, and you get this unit here. This distance at the end here is the perpendicular distance of the pivot from the line of action of the force being considered. Right now it may not seem important since you will only be given perpendicular distances between line of action of the force and the pivot. But in higher levels the forces may be at an angle which will require you to find out what exactly the perpendicular component of the force is. Now if the diagram is as such, where a force is applied here, this here can represent the effort, pivot or fulcrum, and if for instance you have something on the end here, that will be a load. This here is the line of action of this force. This here is just simply a line that is parallel to this so that you can find the distance perpendicular to the two of them. So if you have any confusions you can simply reference these two textbooks or you can send me any question that you may have and I will answer it. Thank you.